Rick Jairo in the Shire, um, the Lord of the Rings theme, the bar and cafe. I think the bar is doing a lot of the heavy lifting with that. Like, uh, we all remember the famous birdcage scene from Lord of the Rings, or the, the code rack battle from Lord of the Rings. There's literally nothing to do with Lord of the Rings in this room. People often ask me why I got into stand-up comedy, particularly after they see me perform. Uh, it's quite simple, really. I'm an attention seeker, but I'm too lazy to learn an instrument and to this to be a male model. I, I get told that I'm, uh, I'm not good-looking in a traditional sense, which is fine. Um, but annoyingly, nobody ever expands on that and tells me what sense I'm good looking in. Like, I'd like to know the sense. Um, it's, it's clearly not safe. I've got what they call uh, a dad bod. Or a, a father figure, whichever you prefer. Um, I, struggle, I struggle with bulimia. The, the spelling of the word that is, I clearly know what that means, sorry. I knew I had to start losing weight when my, my girlfriend would tell me to suck it in whenever we were getting photos taken. And that was all well and good until I discovered that you can suck into it. <laughs> Unfortunately. My girlfriend can be brutal like that though, you know, like she, I recently overheard her pick me as the kill during a game of Fuck, Marry, Kill. And so, I wasn't even given to her as an option. Like, it was Westlife, the Irish band. Her friend said, who out of Westlife would you fuck, marry, kill? She said, I'd fuck Ian, I'd marry Nikki, and I'd kill Darren. So that was a fun day. And, um, my girlfriend, though, fair bit, like she is a bit of a, a tomcat in the bedroom, I don't mind admitting. She, uh, she asks me to handcuff her and blindfold her and even sometimes choke her, um, and that, that sounds hot, but in reality she just doesn't want to touch me or see me and she'd rather be unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend, uh, she started Slimming World, uh, I'm not sure if you have that in America, but Slimming World, basically, it's, it's hard to explain. so she started Slimming World, which means I've started Slimming World, it's like a weight watching kind of a thing. So I went there, and I'm not allowed back to the weigh-in ceremony because there was an incident to where... Uh... So what happens is, like, they all gather around, all the fatties, and then <laughs> one by one, they go up to get weighed, like, like cattle. Uh, <laughs> and I was there, and all I knew going in was that when the weight loss is announced, you're supposed to cheer and clap. That's all the information I had before I headed into this establishment. So when I went there, and someone was two pounds heavier, I booed. <laughs> <laughs> and then, a few minutes later, someone was six pounds heavier, so I mooed. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not allowed back in that building anymore. <laughs> Got some news recently, my girlfriend and I are expecting. <laughs> You guys clapped way too soon. Premature clap on that one. What I was, if you let me finish, I was gonna say that my girlfriend and I are expecting to overcome the fact that she's barren. Serious oh. <laughs> 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 the barren, that's, <laughs> that's just a stupid joke. She's fertile as you like. But uh, this is 100% true. My dad recently told, well he warned me, don't get your girlfriend pregnant because he is a cunt. <laughs> So now, luckily my girlfriend is as competitive as I am, so we're trying for a baby, just purely out of spite. <laughs> I'm hoping for twins so we can name one fuck and one you. <laughs> I told my dad, I told my mom, fuck my dad, I told my mom <laughs> that I didn't think my dad was ever a good dad. And she said he is, he's just never been good with kids. <laughs> I don't think my mom knows what a dad is. <laughs> I, I certainly don't. <laughs> Speaking of being bad with kids, who saw the Michael Jackson documentary? It's a humdinger, isn't it? Like, so much new information. So much. Like, who knew? Who knew? Who knew? That he made music as well. <laughs> 
Michael Jackson, the king of pop being kids trousers. Eh? <laughs> The only way to describe Michael Jackson is a piece of dog shit, isn't it? And like all dog shit, he turned white over time. <laughs> I, um, I hate stereotypes, I do. I, I fucking hate stereotypes. All my life I've hated them. I never, I never believed them, you know? And then I heard the one about Irish men having small penises and they kind of nailed it. <laughs> like, the Americans don't know, but the Irish people in the room, they won't know that. Like, in America, it legitimately is a stereotype that Irish men have small penises. So for any Irish men in the room, we owe a significant debt of gratitude to Conor McGregor oh. for just smashing that stereotype, because I can't think of a bigger prick. <laughs> <laughs> McGregor really, he, McGregor, he came off the rails, didn't he, in the last year or two? He's gone yeah. fucking insane. Like, he, he attacked a referee, didn't he? And he, he smashed a fan's phone, and he's, he's been accused of sexual assault, you know? He's crossed so many lines, and by cross, I mean definitely snorted. <laughs> <laughs> McGregor has a certain type of confidence, a very rare type of confidence that you only usually see in traveler kids, and the Americans in the room won't know what a traveler kid is. So, it's like, a, it's like a hillbilly, but who fights more. <laughs> yeah, it's a rare kind of company. Like, I live near a halting site, that's where they house these travellers. <laughs> I live near one, uh, I'm from Cork, and near where I live, there's a very busy road. And one of the kids was crossing the road one day, and a very busy road now. He was six years of age, and I was on one side of the road, and I'm very friendly with the family, so I chat with him. And he was... He's crossing the road and he's a missing guy. But he said, fuck a traffic light, he just walked out of the road. And he, and he stuck his hands out. And traffic screeched to a standstill. But nobody beat or they didn't even look at nobody. They just let this child have his way with the road. And then he got to the side of the road that I was on. And I said to him, I was like, Charlie, how did you manage that? And he said, you either have it or you don't. I have it. You don't. <laughs> That's the kind of confidence I aspire to have. <laughs> Where was I before I started talking about travel? Stereotypes. Yeah, I hate stereotypes. <laughs> I hate stereotypes. I often have to break stereotypes when I'm with my mom. Because she's still racist, thanks for asking. Um, and particularly in airports, like, I have to calm her down. When we're in an airport and someone's wearing, like, a burqa or whatever they call it, she freaks out. And I have to explain to her, like, Muslims are like toddlers. <laughs> I'll justify that. <laughs> Muslims are like toddlers. <laughs> like 99.99% of them are absolutely amazing. They have nothing to worry about. But there's that tiny percentage, that 0.01%, who are just so <coughs> sure that they give the rest a bad reputation. A cunty kid is like a member of ISIS. But to be fair, I think we'd all prefer to be sat next to the ISIS lad on a flight. <laughs> That's my time, guys. <laughs>